okay so today we are doing the third chapter of bhagavad gita the summary of the third chapter of bhagavad gita so this chapter is all about action what one should do and what one should avoid right and uh, uh, i think there's some great advice here so let's start so one thing is very clear krishna is uh, saying you should avoid uh, satisfying your senses too much right in fact he goes and says like uh, the person who acts to satisfy his senses alone is uh, doing a great sin right and he says if if you do action like these uh, then you are going to create bondage for yourself in this world right because these actions creates a bondage now what does that mean so let's say i have a urge to eat something uh, i have a urge i have a desire to satisfy uh, some sense to satisfy to eat something right now what is going to happen now if i eat that thing uh, that urge is i'm not going to feel very satisfied right uh, but that urge going to stop for a for for a while but it's not going to stop but it's not going to uh, permanently dissolve right in fact after some time the same urge is going to come uh, with a different object even more stronger right it's kind of addiction loop the more i act in that way the more uh, the stronger my desire becomes next time right so it's not like i'm going to feel satisfied in that loop right i'm just going to get stuck and stuck and stuck uh, in that kind of a bondage right so that's what he's saying and if you act in that sense to satisfy your senses uh, you are going to create bondage for yourself in this one right so what is the alternative so he created uh, uh, so he proposed three <laughs> three different alternatives here uh, the one is to act for sacrifice right to act for the sacrifice in fact the people who uh, satisfy their senses after acting for after uh, sacrificing uh, their minds are not so agitated right so their minds are um, still feels good so act for the sacrifices an example could be is uh, if you notice like uh, if you're serving at some places right let's say if you are serving the food in some place you will notice generally you will notice it's uh, like if you serve everybody and then if you eat in the last you're going to feel a bit more satisfied right it's just naturally you're going to feel a bit more satisfied you know and uh, and in so while we are doing that while we are you know sacrificing some kind of a sense pleasure for uh, something better that in that moment it might have like a little bit pain even it might have some you know a uh, little bit dissatisfaction uh, in that moment but it feels much better later right and you you didn't created any kind of bondage for yourself in fact if you have that if if a uh, addiction happens on uh, you know sacrificing it's even better but it doesn't create bondage in this world right just the way satisfying your senses creates so that's uh, uh, that's the first advice that you should be acting for sacrifice right and the second advice is uh, uh, you should be acting accordance to your nature right so here uh, uh, in the bhagavad gita in in general in these kind of scriptures in india uh, the fundamental understanding is the world is made out of uh, uh, three fundamental properties three gunas right tamas rajas and sattva tamas is more like inertia dull dark sort of element rajas is more like uh, agitation energy active that sort of element and uh, sattva is more like balance pure light that sort of element and everybody and everything is made out of these three elements right and if you look at yourself you will see like okay there is a different amount of element in terms of how active you are how dull you are how balanced you are in that way and it's going to change throughout your lifetime but based on those properties based on the understanding of those properties uh, you should be acting yeah you shouldn't be acting by seeing somebody else right seeing somebody else doing something and then we get attracted and then we start you know uh, acting that way so here he is suggesting understand your nature understand your uh, 
structure and then act according to that structure act according to that uh, nature right and in fact he says uh, it's better to act even with errors um, according to your nature as compared to doing something flawlessly um, based on somebody else's nature right so the second suggestion is um, act based on your nature and the third suggestion is um, so he, so highest kind of happiness or highest level of pleasure or you know like the highest level of goal in india in these kind of scriptures are uh, considered self being stable in yourself or self realization or you know um, the the joy of self and i think the self means here is awareness the joy of uh, the nature of awareness itself is uh, the highest thing possible right we also call it sat chit anand uh, eternal conscious bliss so a person who is established in that state uh, doesn't need to act anyway it doesn't matter what kind of action uh, he is doing because nothing uh, i mean he is already in the state where nothing more can be achieved right and in fact in my understanding this uh, literature is more like a symbolic literature right where krishna represent somebody who is extremely established in the highest state of self established in awareness and the higher states and arjuna is like a normal person like us uh, in the more egoistical state not not like self centric ego but more like i am an individual being and uh, um, what to do sort of you know state and this conversation is happening between these two states one is more like on this level and another one is a much more higher level right so in that case krishna is telling him like you should offer your action to me think like you are doing these action as a offering to me yeah that's like a that's the third suggestion i found here like instead of acting based on you know senses or this and that act by making this action as a offer to me right and don't think like uh, uh, don't do, don't do it because of some kind of gain or um, you know agitation or uh, more egoistical uh, pursuits but do it to offer it to me yeah so that seems that's a third uh, suggestion yeah so this seems like more this is what krishna seems to be uh, driving arjuna towards more like you know self do it more for a sacrifice or uh, act based on your what is your nature and what is your duty according to that nature and then offer these actions to me instead of you know owning them to yourself offer it to me and then arjuna ask very interestingly arjuna ask uh, you know sometimes i <laughs> even though i know what is right and wrong for me it seems like there is a force inside me which makes me do something which is against even my own will right and the krishna replies this is basically the uh, the three gunas the three properties of the nature one of them is uh, rajas this is the nature of that rajas guna right the rajas property uh, which is also a desire which is it's also the just like fire and the uh, heat is kind of the same rajas and desire is kind of the same in that way so that uh, property that uh, that guna um, is is very strong it's very strong and it's uh, its nature is desire right and it is never satisfied right you can never satisfy a, a desire in that way right the more you satisfy them it's like a fire the more it becomes more aggravated and it 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 is like in front of you so that you cannot actually see who you are or like you know all the self realization and that kind of thing you cannot approach them because this is burning right in front of you it's like you know dust in front of a uh, mirror and that sort of thing and uh, it's adobe is basically your mind your senses and your intellect this is where it lives so what he offers is um, what he tells arjuna here is your senses are superior than inert object your mind is more superior than senses your mind can decide which sense to engage which sense to not engage it's more like a, a controller of these senses your intellect is even stronger than your mind right so if you decide something i'm going to 
do a fast today, then it doesn't matter what urges come, right? The intellect is even more stronger in that way uh, than whatever the urge is coming in the mind. And your awareness, your self, your sense of self is even higher than uh, your intellect. So if you're acting at the point, you're acting um, from the state of being established in the self, uh, those actions are automatically going to be even higher than being a strategically acting on something, right? And he advised, like, understand this rajas thing or this, uh, you know, sense desires. They are your enemies, right? And you, and it's better you learn to conquer them instead of satisfying them. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.